Hello, Nighthawk. Are you receiving me? I shall say this only... Uh, this is... Well, this is how Torg Eternity gives you, the GM, full control over the plot without railroading. And I'm going to be showing you how to build an adventure using Torg, that wonderful role-playing system. And um, so, without further ado, welcome to the Delphi Council and the Storm Knights. Hello and welcome to this, the third in our installment of the Torg series. My name is Guy, and before we scream and shout about what kind of video this is, well, I've got some great news for you. Now, Ulysses and I have been talking, and they have listened to your request for a playthrough, yay, and have given me the go-ahead to run one. Now, I've put together a team of players that I love playing with, and I think that you enjoy watching play, and we're going to be running a one-shot specifically for you, but this does require some planning and some so we felt it would be best to take you through that process to give you more insight into the game. And this is the first step. This is the first one. Next week we'll do the second one and then the playthrough will hopefully air the week after that. But first... This is a sponsored video. I've been paid to talk about this system. And I hope that I have been fair in my assessment of the material thus far. I have spoken my mind about things that I didn't like. Now, if you want to see a full catalogue of what Torg has to offer, Follow the link in the description down below and you'll get a 10% discount on your purchase, courtesy of Ulysses and how to be a great GM. Okay, done. So, where do we start when designing a one-shot? We have the law, we have the cosms. There is another resource that's been included in the book and I haven't spoken about it before. The Delphi Council. Now, this is a super secret agency formed by the United Nations and run by a very dubious character known as Quinn Sebastian. He's a charismatic, solutions driven, result achieving mastermind. The Council was established to fight the High Lords on their terms. Well, how do they do that? Before we get there, we need to take a step back and from and, 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 and take a step back from that scenario and look at how does one actually fight the cosms and contradictions. Surely every soldier sent into a Cosm turns into a Cosm local. Well, actually, not everyone. Now, I've not spoken about them before because it is one of the things that I personally will change about Torg straight up. Enter the Storm Knights. These are individuals who have like a natural reality field, if you like, around them. One that resists contradictions and enforces their reality from, uh, from, from, you know, it, it, it kind of works. Now, why would I change them? I, I, I'm not keen on the name, personally. I think I'd call mine Section 51. I mean, we're playing with all the tropes, so, so why not? Anyway, apart from the name, they're really cool. So anyway, these individuals are employed by the Delphi Council to go in where no one else can and to basically take it to the High Lords. Now, this means we have a whole lot of law we have a lot of options, and we have a large amount of information to dump onto the players at once. Hence using the Delphi Council. As with most games that are lore-heavy, we need to get our PCs into this slowly. Now, if you've ever watched a Marvel fan or a DC comic uh, film, uh, if you've ever watched those films, you will always realise, and they do this over and over, and then redo it, and then relaunch it, and re-sequel it, and re-prequel it, they do the introduction movie. This is where the hero gets their power under strange sets of circumstances, and then miraculously manages to defeat a, basically a grade C villain. Right? Now, the reason why this works is because it introduces all of us, the viewers, to the world, the law, and the situation. The Delphi Council is a perfect tool for doing that with our players. Our heroes start as unknowns, thrown into a terrible mix of chaos, and saved by a Storm Knight, <coughs> section 51. Uh, but that is technically, uh, you know, that, 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 that Storm Knight is tragically killed before they arrive, which forces the PCs to pick up the flag and go it alone until the Delphi Council reaches out and offers them some information and guidance. This is literally blue pill, red pill moment for the players. Now, once your players know about about the Torg universe, obviously, then you don't need to do this kind of setup game at all. So this could be a session zero game for that matter, uh, but I think it would be quite fun to have it as a main opener. Now, the critical thing will be to establish the notions of the game, and that is that there are different cosms and realities, magic works, the Delphi Council as a means of support, and missions. 
And then, of course, the objective of the campaign, which is generally destroying a stele or three, pushing the High Lords back across their bridges or, or whatever it is for your, your main campaign. Now, you need some good enemies as well. Now, good enemies are basically cool villains that the players love to hate, that kind of stuff. Now, so there we are. In my game, I also like to add a hint of trouble in the ranks of Earth. And the book talks about it as well, the apathy of some humans who go, well, we should just let them rule the world. It'll be better than what we've got at the moment. Now, the Delphi Council is easy. I am Agent X from the Delphi Council. Listen to me or die. There is a passage ahead of you. Follow it. Turn left. Stop. Wait for the guard to pass. Now, continue. At the door, knock twice. Then enter. You're going to have to kill the SOB who's inside. Good luck for them. The council has some resources at their disposal. So their leader, Quinn Sebastian, is based on an old aircraft carrier in New York. I think it's an aircraft carrier, anyway. Surrounded by the living land cosm. That's all the dinosaurs and cool stuff, right? Now, he vets most of those recruited to the council, to the Delphi Council. And then he hands out missions based on a global strategy that only he knows about. What we'll want to establish for our campaign, though, is a handler. Someone who isn't Quinn. Why? Well, until our PCs are higher level, uh, a higher clearance level, I'd expect for someone to handle them, as Mr. Sebastian is bigger, uh, is bigger with busy stuff, is busy with bigger stuff. Now, our, our, our handler should be a good one, someone who knows the ropes, is giving the correct information, and is really someone that the PCs can trust, someone that, that they know is on the right side for them. So let's call him Malcolm. Malcolm is going to guide the PCs once they've fallen down the rabbit hole and accepted that they are cosm resistant and part of section 51 uh, He should then give them a brief overview of the world and the darkness they're in, but it should be very brief um, Orosh is a nightmare of undead cultists and mad Victorian soldiers Tharkold is a Russian cooperative with demons from the 22nd century. Isle is full of dragons literally one line per cosm so that they get a sense of what's going on now as the gm this is where you should lo be looking at the pc's faces which one makes them smile or grimace the most it's important we're going to come back to that i'd also have malcolm use magic to display the world map that will show the pcs how things work i.e magic and psionics and all that kind of stuff Obviously, by this point, the PCs will have made their characters and should have theoretically glanced through the book. But they're players, right? So, it's just a blueprint, though. The book is just a blueprint. It's up to you as the GM to make the book and the world come alive. So, the first adventure that Malcolm sets them on should send them to a cosm that made the PCs react the most. Let them prep a little bit with Malcolm's help, Ooh, contradictions and, and axioms, and you know, and, and the Delphi Council support, give them some cool equipment and, and make it fun. The adventure basically, I mean, it just literally writes itself. So, how do you represent the cosms and um, what they're going into? What kind of missions do you run in there? Well, in the core rulebook, there are examples aplenty for you to choose from. There's actually an entire section for the GM in the GM's guide chapter that is devoted to explaining each cosm and why and what type of missions can be found there, why it's cool to go there, all of the, the, the wonderful stuff. So it really is, it's a big world and there are many, many choices. Hence suggesting using the player's reactions to the lore dump to decide upon your first cosm. Then make them run through it. Make it fast paced and exciting and it, it should be just simple. Now after that, the next adventure should be to another cosm. Don't get lazy and stay in just one. A good portion of the game flavour and the way that the game actually works relies on changing cosms to bring in all the richness and tone that the game offers. So bear that in mind. That's it from me this week. I'll be back next week when I design the actual adventure we'll be using in the one shot based on the information presented in today's video. I hope, I hope that these videos are helpful and uh, you can help these, uh, the, the, you can help the channel, I should say, by sharing these videos with your players if you think the Torg is for you and your group. Torg really has made me think about some cool adventures and, well, I, I can't wait to design the one 
for the one shot. It's going to be tricky because it's only, it's only four hours or three hours or whatever it is. I mean, it's going to be tight, but we wouldn't be here to talk about Torg or to talk Torg, as they say. I feel like I should be talking about a car or something. Anyway, um, if it wasn't for my Patreons, you guys support the channel monthly and I hope the rewards that you get for doing so are helpful in some small way. Uh, each month, Patreons receive four podcasts. Several battle maps, usually it's three, and then a helpful or hopefully inspirational guide to adventures or making taverns or temples or whatever. Anyway, until next time, thank you for watching all the way to the end, and I wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming. <laughs>